going to be uh, showing you how to install halos and LED strip and LED strip in your Lexus SC300 or SC400 headlights and make it look mostly stock. Um, a company, a few companies do this. Uh, there's an aftermarket one that kind of cheap called Spider that people like to go with because it has I don't know three LEDs and like a halo built in and stuff. But I really like the way that the stock housing looks, and I think it just needs to be upgraded a bit for the time. Um, but essentially, uh, we're gonna be learning how to upgrade your projector, your projector lens, and install a halo and an LED strip. So we can take it from this to this. Okay, so let's get started. So there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube on how to take your headlights apart. I recommend the um, tutorial videos by Retrofit. Anyway, so as soon as you've taken your thing apart, there's going to be three pieces to your SDR headlight. There's going to be the front lens, the chrome element, like a like uh, the middle piece that reflects everything, and then you have your back, your base plate, which houses the sockets for your light bulbs and your cornering bulbs and your parking bulb and everything else. Like that. So I just freshly took these out of the oven because I'm doing one at a time. Um, this went successfully, so we're gonna do the same thing with this. So first off, what we want to do is we want to retrofit, not retrofit, but just install the new projector lens inside this existing housing. And so there's two things that we need to do first. So the projector is housed inside this um, this ring right here. This is how the ring looks when it's stock. Anyway, so I haven't really done anything to my ring besides shoved my um, halo into the ring. So you want to get these Morimoto profile 80 millimeter rings um, halos, switchback rings is what I got, and they fit perfectly inside your your lens mount or your lens holder. And so, since the new Morimoto lens projector lens is an ever so tiny bit shorter than the stock lens, here we can see a stock SC300 lens. And here is the new Mori motor lens. And essentially the only difference here is that this is a translucent lens, as in you can't actually see through it all the way. This is a transparent lens, as in you can see all the way. And if you look at these lenses up close, you can see that there's a definite difference. This one looks so much clearer than this one. And yes, this one will basically blend the beam better, but modern cars have these very, very sharp cutoff point. And if you want that, then this is what you want. So since this is ever so slightly shorter in terms of diameter, typically this wouldn't fit if you just put it inside the normal housing, it would shake around. But since we are placing our halo into the housing, you can fit this and it'll fit perfectly inside. So once you do that, you want to start installing the headlight, the, the lens back into the headlight. Let me show you guys. So now we're looking at the base plate by itself. And here, as I said before, we have our ring with the halo installed. You wanna make sure that the halo is present on all sides evenly, so when you put it, when you fully assemble the headlight, it looks, it looks even, it looks like stock at least, as much as possible. You don't want it to stick out like a sore thumb. So now that this wire is here, this wire fits perfectly on the side. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your new lens, clean it off, very thoroughly because once you install the back of this lens you can't clean it again so you want to make sure there's no dust or no visible particles or anything you can clean the front of the lens afterwards but you can't clean the back so you want to install the lens as cleanly as possible now that it's here you can set this here to keep it in place and it's okay if you get your fingers on the front of this lens for the time being as I said you can clean it off later properly okay so now that this is here you want to get your screws that hold hold the mount in 
or the retainer, I guess is the correct word. Lens retainer. And then you want to just put one to hold it in place. But what you really want to do is you want to tighten it from the other side because the other one is a neat one that's going to be going to be harder. So we're going to just put one, two threads on this one. And then we're going to go over this side and we're going to press it in. And for the record, all of these parts that I'm tightening down are made out of metal. So they will flex and they will not crack or break like plastic. This is metal, this housing is metal, the screws are metal. So there's no reason for anything to crack or break. So now that I have a four threads on this side, I'm gonna put two more threads on this side and then I'm gonna just even it out. This won't, the screw will not sit flush like it's like it usually does with the stock lens and without the halo. So you wanna make sure that there's an even amount of threads threaded in by the screw into the projector housing on each side. And you wanna make sure you don't over tighten it and you wanna make sure you don't diagonal it. So you wanna go one, two, three, four until you have enough tightness that you don't wanna go any further. Essentially we're making sure that their lens and the halo do not rattle under, under load once this thing is going. Okay, now that that's done, good. Now we've installed the halo and the new projector lens. And um, you can see here that there's a gigantic difference once again from the way each lens looks. So here you can see with the old lens, the light does show through, but it, it kind of does bleed a little bit. But with this lens, there's a definite cutoff point because of the way it's designed. So I'm going to put my flashlight here. And you can see that the, the light is super crystal clear. And that beam is definitely going to make a difference on the road. Now that we've done the first part of our retrofit, actually the first two parts, because we've done the lens and the halo, we're going to set this aside and we're going to focus on the chrome part. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to take our LED strip and mount it to the front so that it runs all the way along the front. So um, there's a few ways to do this. Uh, ways to do this. A lot of people drill into their chrome faceplates, not for this car, but for other cars, so that they can um, put wire through. So here I have 30 gauge. Oh, sorry, 28 gauge, which is extremely thin. The higher the gauge, the thinner the wire. Uh, this is extremely thin black steel wire um, and so the point of this is to fasten anything that needs to be fastened anything that you're expecting to come loose under vibration or heat and make sure that it stays in place so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to fasten this but only in two places here and here because that's the only place that I have holes and I don't want to drill any more holes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue very very carefully and crazy glue where um, necessary but I'm going to seal it all along here and then I'm going to wrap wire around here and here and then I'm going to run the cord through here. I could run the cord around here but then it has a chance of kinking and I don't want this to come, I, I know it's braided but I don't want it to just get kinked or come loose or anything so I'm just going to run it through the back. Um, it should be fine. Uh, I don't foresee any major issues. In this one, it's run through the back, like I said, but I don't think you can even see that the wire is run through. And if you guys know the SC, yes, you are correct. There should be an extra reflector here, but I don't think that's necessary because the lens already has a reflector. So I don't think double reflector for the cornering lights are necessary. I'm just gonna keep it like this. Doing projects like this, a hot a heat gun or a a torch is your friend. So in this case, because I can't reach all the way over to the heat gun, I'm going to use the torch. Essentially what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be dabbing glue on the back of this and then I'm just going to place it all the way around here. Once I reach this part, I'm going to wrap it in wire and that should be it. I'm going to run the wire through. Let me start doing that right now.
so now that I've finished gluing and properly done um, fastening the strip, I'm gonna go back and heat it with a heat gun because once I put the thing on, I can't use a, a torch, right? Because that, that'll destroy the, the LED strip as well as the chrome. So I'm gonna go back with the heat gun on a medium setting and then I'm gonna press it all into the places and hold it until the glue sets again. Because yes, I have glued it, but I only glued it at the bottom so that the top doesn't have a seam, it doesn't show. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna press it in until it until it locks. And at that point, I know that the glue is set properly and dried properly, so that even under vibration or heat, it shouldn't let go, especially with these fasteners. Fully install the LED strip. We're gonna wipe down the entire surface area because my fingerprints have been all over this and once this is installed, even though it'll be behind a lens, a line lens, I don't want to see any semblance of any residue or any grease or anything of the sort. So I'm using these interior cleaning wipes that don't have a lot of alcohol because these parts are old and yes I could use alcohol, but this is coronavirus and I also couldn't find any alcohol wipes. So I'm using these interior cleaning wipes and it just um, cleans everything. So that's it for this part and then next we go on to installation. That we have done we are done with uh, phase three. Um, we're going we're gonna have to find a way to drill a hole into the back of this. So funny issue, I don't actually have a drill bit that fits what I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a modular approach. So I'm gonna heat this plastic up with a heat gun and then once it's in the plastic welding temperature, I'm just going to stick my scissors through and I'm going to twist it until I have the circumference that I like and then at that point I'll just pull it back and it'll dry out. The hole that I wanted in the plastic right here, I used the plastic melting tool, the plastic welding tool and I just did this. I think it's perfect and you can tell by doing that because you want, essentially you want it to be, you want it to house two of these braided wires. And if there's any more space afterwards, you can just seal it with the the um, resealing glue so that no moisture gets in. So yeah, let's start the next part. So now what we're gonna do is pretty easy part. We're just gonna install this onto here. There's three inputs. That's it, we're done. Okay, next part is we are going to refinish this lens. So the guy that I got this from, he did a not great job of polishing the lens and then he did a very very wet coat of clear coat on top and it was all runny already, you can see it. It ran when he painted it <clears throat> and when I put it in the oven to bake it apart, that clear coat just destroyed itself. And honestly when I polish my lenses, I don't actually use clear coat, I just let the polishing speak for itself. And you can see from that headlight right there. So I don't actually need um, clear coat, so I'm going to take 800 sandpaper, then 1500 sandpaper, then 2000 grit sandpaper, and then wet sand the crap out of it so that all of the clear coat is gone. After that's done, I'm going to take my trusty plastic, I'm gonna take my plastic polish, and then I'm just gonna polish it until it looks new. After one entire battery of this drill here, with this foam, foam um, attachment and this Meguiar's Plastex Clear Plastic Polish, um, I have brought this thing back to life entirely. I don't see any severe scratches or swirls or anything and it looks pretty much just straight through clear. So now we're going to start reassembly. <laughs> So now that we are essentially done, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and fill in any gaps that we need with some extra resealing glue. And 
the glue that I use is this Morimoto Retro Rubber Resealing Glue. This is what um, you should use. I come with two variations, black and gray, depending on what your stock um, glue looks like. And since Terada has gray glue, I went with the gray glue. So essentially all you have to do is heat it up with a heat gun and then fill it in and then clamp the front lens to the... I, I just installed the reflector inside the front lens so that's one piece and then that goes into the back and then once you do that you clamp it together while it's hot so that it sets and then you put the screws and the clips in these clips these fastening clips which hold hold the front to the back and the screws and that's about it so let's get started you retrofit your SC300 or SC400 or Toyota Source headlights with LED halos and strips and a new projector lens. Thank you guys for watching. I hope to make more videos like this in the future. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.